Good care afternoon, for thank you, Phil. Here on the centre break. <coughs> Should be a good match. Higgins and Robertson. the ninth time, Peter, they've played in the Championship League and the third time they've played in the winners' group. On the previous two occasions, Robertson has won 3-1 2019 and all the way back in 2010. As for the overall head-to-head, -head, it's a measure of Neil Robertson's skill and ability that he leads Higgins 10-8. That's in tournaments outside of the Championship League. And perhaps the most notable win was one of the most recent 10-9 in the final of the Tour Championship last year, when Higgins led 9-4 and disintegrated in front of our eyes. Unbelievable finish. John just couldn't get over the line in the end. I think Higgins' inability to get the job done that night was caused by an amalgamation of disappointment over the course of that season. He lost in several finals, including the English Open final. 9-8 from 8-6 up against Neil Robertson. Speaking to John earlier, and he said he'd Altered his cue a little bit, made it a little bit shorter, trying to get himself a little bit more compact, a little bit better control. It's funny, Phil, how when you get older, when, you, when you're young, you just pick the cue up, you just play. When you get older, you start tinkering with things, you know, trying to look for solutions, sometimes for problems that aren't really there. That's very true. I think with Higgins, though, he's been tinkering for many, many years. Wow, that was close. That was very close. Yeah, when John Higgins won the first won the world title back in 1998 he's, his bridge hand was way back from the cue ball he's moved it considerably closer over the years It's the first potentially costly error in this frame. Yeah, it's a weird one, though, with the queues, because, like, in years gone by, people just had the same queue their entire career, and now... Every time you see some of these players, they've got a new cue. I'm amazed how quickly they can get used to them. What? <coughs> you know, Dominic Dale made the same point yesterday, as did Stephen Hallworth in commentary. Yeah, the entire ethos with cues 
has changed. The point I made then, and I'll repeat it, if you listened yesterday, I apologise for repetition, but the great Fred Davis, who won the World Championship on multiple occasions in the late 40s and 50s, he turned professional at the age of 16, played his last match as a professional at the age of 78, and used the same cue throughout. Three. When I first started covering the circuit, Peter, if a player was using a new cue, it's because their old one had been damaged some way. That's the only way they'd ever think about switching. Yeah, Stephen Four. Hendry, I don't think he was ever the same player after his cue got damaged. And intrinsically, Hendry's original cue, which he enjoyed so much success with, wasn't a great cue. If anyone else tried yeah. to use it, they'd probably think it was bent. Hadn't got a lot of power in it. Twelve. Just ordinary. And yet for him, it was like an extension of his right arm. Meanwhile, Neil quietly going about his business. 19. Still in prime position. Like a little 20. practice routine, spread the reds out around the black, and black goes in both corner pockets. Don't hold out much hope for Higgins here, I'm afraid. Just to conclude the conversation on cues, Peter. 27. Are you still using the, your original law? How many have you had in your career? I'm on one. I've got one. The same one. I can't play with that one. I can't get a new one. <laughs> Old school. Yeah, I'm still on that. I'm still on a standard elk tip because there's hundreds of different tips these days and chalks and yeah. 35. Thirty-six. Of course you do have to change in snooker. You can't stand still. And one of the great innovations of recent years has been the introduction of the chalk from Finland, Taum, which I think has improved the game out of all recognition. It doesn't quite eliminate, but it certainly drastically reduces kicks and big bounces. Presumably you're using the Taum. I am, yes. I've, but to be honest, I've only just started using it it come because I've tried a few of their early versions, but the actual last one, the newest one, yeah, is is it seems very good. Forty-three. So were you one of those players who, with the original town, were a little concerned it might create a few more miscues? Yeah, and, and I think I wasn't necessarily say it's the chalk, but if you if you if you're not a Fantastic cues to go with the chalk. That did help, and because I've got a slight sort of 44. dip down at the end, yeah, then I was miscuing too much. But yeah, the new version is very good. Yeah, we in commentary used to be quite obsessed with kicks yeah. at one point, and then all of a sudden. They seem to disappear from the landscape. Occasionally one crops up, but it's a real rarity these days. Yeah, and that can only be a good thing. You know, you, you want the only reason you miss a ball is because you've missed a ball. 49. Robertson there missing his intended cannon, but I think he might be on a red anyway, which is really tough. 
Yeah, and it's a must get where the ball's at. Counter attack is on if he doesn't get it. Zero percent, 49. And it was close, but it's not there. All great players clear up a lot. But John Higgins has got a deserved reputation as one of the finest players to wipe out a deficit in a frame. With a tight turning clearance, he's done it so often on so many big occasions, Peter. Yeah, I think if Eight. I had to have any player in the game to clear up from 50, 60 behind. I think I would go for John Higgins. Nine. Which made that defeat even more bizarre to Neil Robertson that he couldn't get over the line because he's made a career out of getting over the line from any situation. I'm a massive Higgins fan. How can you not be? But you hear people say, well, 16. it'll be OK when he wins one. All of the stuff that's gone before will be forgotten. But there's no guarantee 17. he will win again. He should. It's a little bit like the, the situation with Lazowski. He should win. But no one's guaranteed to do anything. No, there's so many good players on the tour these days that nothing's guaranteed anymore. I do agree that if John Higgins wins tournaments again, the scar tissue from last season and 24. all of those final defeats will be healed, definitely. But it's a matter of whether he does win again, that's the point. Making the slightly more awkward red. Trying to leave an angle probably to disturb. 25. Three reds next to the pink. Probably just one good cannon away from winning the frame. Squeeze through the gap for the red just to the right of the pink. 32. Got to be careful he doesn't kiss the pink on the way past. Doesn't want to kiss the pink having pointed the red and land in no man's land for position. 33. Yeah, played it well. go of these two if it does it'll open up the other red 39 if he pots this red in the middle otherwise he's gonna have to leave himself a little angle on the pink 40 well, I presume it must go
45. Hasn't he taken these terrifically well? So precise. So well planned out. 46. Yeah, inch perfect every shot. Made life so much easier for himself. Now probably down for the blue. Easier to go on the yellow from the blue. Fifty-four. Let me quickly tell you, also displaying a good end game. Car and Wilson just cleared up with sixty-three to win the first from Judd Trump on table two. Sixty. Sixty-two. The yellow takes against thirteen ahead, so green and brown will be sufficient. Sixty-five. Well, a flaw, a flawless clearance. Six, nine. <clears throat> Seventy four. Eighty. And the for the rest of the players in the group, that was ominous. John Higgins at his best. Neil Robertson made 49, Mr. Tricky Red. And Higgins did the rest. He leads 1-0, looking good. John Higgins, been there, done that, worn the waistcoat. And he remains, in his mid-40s, a formidable player. Thank you. The second frame, John Higgins to break. Resting the Bed Victor Championship League title from him will be a troublesome task. Higgins has actually won this tournament three times since 2017. Originally successful in 2017, retained the title the following year, and then recaptured the title last year. That's an impressive record. Very loose safety. Red gone over the corner pocket. The pot, no problem, but pink pot's in the middle, black pot's in the corner, so should be able to get on a colour as well. Oh. 
One. Now that shows how well he thinks. A lot of players there might have tried to be too ambitious with position. He realised his limitations, anyone's limitations, and he's left himself a pressure pink, but he's backed himself to knock it in. It's a very tough shot, this, across the table from where the hand is resting on the side cushion. Struck it beautifully. One, one minute, please, John. John Pellew, who was the referee for the Welsh Open final recently, just asking John Higgins to be patient while Pellew tries to work out where to put the pink. The pink spot is occupied, I believe, so it needs to go nearest its own spot in a direct line with the black. While John is doing this, I can tell you that with three Championship Seven. League titles, John Higgins is the joint most successful player in this tournament's history, together with another player currently playing, Judd Trump. Eight. He won the Championship League in 2009, 2014 and 2016. Fifteen. Sixteen. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise you if either of those two were out on their own on four then. Come tomorrow night. And I think given the cutthroat format, the fact you have to win so many matches in your qualifying group, as it were, then the winner's group, it's one of the toughest tournaments you can win. Twenty-four. Shot from the John there, just making sure he got top side of the blue. The one thing with this tournament, Peter, I'm sure you'll agree, you can't relax at any moment, can you? Not like you can build a 9-2 a lead in a best of 19 or anything like that. At any point, you are vulnerable to defeat. Yeah, in this format, the game is never, ever won or lost. Until you're shaking hands. You see lots 29. of matches be two down with three to play. Someone comes back and wins. And they do often say only one shot can change a match. Yeah, well, in the last match of the first session, over on table two, John Higgins was 2-0 down against Stuart Bingham. 1-3-2. In that match, he made breaks of... 56, 30. 83, 100 and 108. There, though... It's the first positional misjudgment we've seen from him in this match. Yeah, you could see him stopping his tracks. I think he knew straight away he'd overdone it. Can't see him going for the long blue, but you don't know. He thought it'd be more like a safety shot, try and get his opponent in trouble. John Higgins, 30. That's another trait of top-class players. When they do run out of position, rather than get annoyed and self-destructive and play a stupid shot, they just step away, cool down, and then play a good safety. Yeah, and he's covered the red on the right-hand side cushion to stop the easy cross-double safety shot. 
There was a chance here. Neil could leave a shot to nothing for Higgins. That's a pretty good reply, though, from Neil. Careful here. He's got to try and get that wire as close to the ball cushion as he can himself. Boy, in the yellow, blue, and red in the middle of the table. Oh, wow. If you want a logo put on your waistcoat, Peter, and you want someone to thread the eye of a needle, <laughs> just ask John. <laughs> Still amazed by the shot Neil Robertson played this morning, where he screwed back off that red and through the off the side cushion through the gap of the two reds for the black in the opposite pocket. It was absolutely amazing. Shot for Higgins. Got to avoid the red on the left hand side cushion if he's trying to go back to bulk. But also doesn't want to just clip a red over the corner pocket. pot here. Ooh, very close. Tried to play it with an element of safety. Look how close he got to the pot. Tremendous queuing. Very hit and miss so far. He's played some really good stuff on occasions and then been way off with some of his pots. Yeah, good way to put it, hit and miss. Oh, that was nicely done by Higgins. What? Not just potting the red, but look where he is on the blue on the correct side of it, giving himself plenty of options. Nice control. Fill the gap now for this red. The Six. black sat there waiting. Already 36 points in front. Very well. Just put a little cannon on the reds and pink. If he thinks he needs to. Oh, surely he hasn't sneaked behind the red, though. 14. Oh, has he? 
What is he just clipped the red on the way past, but hit the pink four ball. Still got a chance into the green pocket. Fifteen. Oh, it had low, but it's in. Played it confidently, didn't overhit it. Just trusted his cueing. Twenty-one. Fraction hard, and that wouldn't have dropped. Twenty-two. Dead still. 29. Delivering the cue there. Thirty. Sixteen in front, so Black will put him sixty-seven in front with sixty-seven on. Now normally this would be quite 37. an intimidating shot, but the the balls across this top cushion have been going in quite comfortably. Oh, but not maybe at that Got pace. I thought he might play that one slower. Yeah, I agree, Phil. Just knock it in, just roll it in. Just enough pace for it to get to the pocket and the frame's done. Still a mountain to climb for Neil, but he's hanging in there. In a few moments, it's going to be 1 1 on the other table. Judd Trump fighting back to level the scores against Kyron Wilson. One. And that's a very nice way to put the lid on a frame. Really well cued. Yeah, again, didn't overhit it, just trusted his cue action. Kept everything still. Don't think we'll see Neil come back to the table. Eight. To use Eurovision parlance. Nil plan for Johnny Neil Robertson in frame two. And nil frames. John Higgins has two. One more required for victory. John Higgins, things have really perked up for him. If you recall, this morning he lost his first match 3 0 to Kyron Wilson, then he was 2 0 down against Stuart Bingham. We were starting to think, is the grip of the Scot on the title starting to slip? Not anymore. He came back to beat Bingham 3 2, and now he leads Neil Robertson 2 0. Just to say, on table two, it is officially 1-1 now, Trump and Wilson. Trump in the second frame, making a 1-0-8 break. 
Now, John Higgins yet to earn his place in the champion of champions, but the likes of Ronnie O'Sullivan, Judd Trump and Mark Allen are going to be there. The event will take place from the 13th to the 19th of November. That's Monday to Sunday. University of Bolton Stadium, home of Bolton Wanderers Football Club. Tickets on sale March 13. And to get those tickets, which are quite a hot ticket, actually, especially for the, the latter matches, go to championofchampionssnooker.co.uk. They rob us and to break. And this is probably the keenest contested year I've ever seen for the champion of champions. So many different winners and so many top players. Not one comps yet. So the winner here, unless it's Judd Trump, will be the 10th player in. Women's world champion. That's coming up shortly. Who will be crowned there in Bangkok? That's 11. Then you've got... WST Classic 12, World Six Reds 13, Tour Championship 14, two places, winner and runner-up from the World Championship. So you've got 16 there, even before the start of next season. I think someone will be disappointed. Obviously, you're getting off a priority list based on the prestige of tournaments. But what we do know for sure is that the ranking Championship League winner, which is going to be held in the summer, and the Invitation Championship League winner being held right now, they are guaranteed. Ronnie O'Sullivan as the champion of champions himself is guaranteed to be back. The Masters gets in, of course it does, Judd Trump. Mark Allen winning the World Grand Prix and the UK Championship. He'll be there. But merely by winning a tournament, normally you're in. Quite often we've had to fill up the 16-player field off the rankings. So normally if you win an event, you're in. This time, I reckon, if we keep having different winners, some tournament winners will miss out. Yeah, I agree, Phil. As the ball was going towards the pocket, I don't know whether you agree, Peter, I thought that might catch the near jaw and stay out. Yeah, and I think he thought exactly the same. He sort of didn't move, he was a bit hesitant, as if he thought he'd missed it. quite a big entry in the uh, Women's World Championship, uh, even though it's been held in Thailand. Five. If you weren't with us yesterday, congratulations to Bei Yulu, Chinese player who made a 1-2-7 break in the round-robin phase of the Women's World Championship. That's the highest ever break in that tournament. I noticed she won again in the round robin today, so maybe 
She's a storm of the future. Twelve. Thirteen. Of course, here we're looking at one half of the winning partnership in the World Mixed Doubles. Neil Robertson partnering Mink Nuturet to win that. Twenty. Twenty-one. Yeah, I'm trying to take a little bit more care here. Doesn't want to make a error like he did in frame one. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Yeah, Nicely struck shot. Round of two cushions. The red at the bottom of the pack will go. Just looking to see if he can leave it and go through the gap down for a blue or bolt colour and open some reds up, or if he just wants to leave himself straight. Thirty six. Thirty seven. Now, where is his next red coming from? Pack will go into the middle pocket and in putting this should free 44. At least one, possibly two other reds up. 45. This has been impressive so far from Neil in this break. Just want to be careful he doesn't overrun. Doesn't want to. Snook himself on that bottom red. And didn't want to really hamper himself. 50 red over to the side either. 52. And this is a carbon Near copy of frame one, Phil. It's not the lead you build, it's how. The balls are placed when you leave the table. Now, if they were awkward, a 52-point lead would be very handy. But they're not awkward. Nothing's awkward. Yeah, I've noticed as well that when most of the times when Neil has missed, he's caught the ball too thin, which tells me that he's, he's not timing the ball properly, he's not getting the cue through. The correct speed. Thank you. Good job. One.
yeah, it's a nice shot, opened everything up. Eight. Knew that couldn't really go wrong. Nine. Couple of slightly awkward reds, but not really safe. I'll tell you what, Peter, if Higgins could clear up right here. 14. He stays on this table to take on Jack Lazowski next. If he were to win this match and the next against Jack, with three points, he'd be well on the way to the semi-final playoffs. Fifteen. Yeah, no, big advantage to stay out there if you've just won a match. Confidence is high. Kewin's good. Especially if you can pull off a, another clearance, they always make you feel a million dollars. 21. Twenty-two. Yeah, nothing to do with the cue ball again. Probably just... Oh, he's going for topspin. Yeah, nice little cannon. Back out for the pink off this red, I should imagine. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. With a break of 83, Judd Trump now leads Corin Wilson 2-1. That's over on table two. If you want to see any of the table two action, of course, it's always available on Matchroom.live or the Matchroom Multisport YouTube channel. I think this group Peter is best described as an embarrassment of riches. 35. You don't know where to look. Yeah, everywhere you look, someone's yes. queuing sweetly. Slightest mistake is getting punished. It's a phenomenal lineup. Best ever. I've been involved in the Championship League from day one. So has Dave Hendon, and we both agree this is the best ever winners group. Thirty-six. There was a dream scenario in Group 7. Ronnie O'Sullivan originally had entered. Had he played in Group 7 and won it? Wow. Sadly, O'Sullivan withdrew. But this is still very star-studded. Now, this is the most tricky red about Hot to be food. removed. When this is gone, everything is sitting pretty. Oh, yeah. yeah, and will you just pull it back for the pink? Leave the cue ball out in the open. Make the pot slightly more difficult, but if he gets it, massive reward. He's just let the cue ball run away slightly. Now he's got a tricky pink into the middle with guaranteed position. 
or uh, probably a slightly easier black, but position a lot harder. What's the choice here, Phil? Well, he potted, if you remember, a really good pressure pink earlier in the match to the same pocket. As you say, position from that is going to be for sure position from the black, which itself is not an easy pot, is not guaranteed. Yeah, I think it's got to be the pink myself. If he pots the pink, he's won the frame. Guaranteed. If he pots the black, he needs two good things. He needs a good pot on the black and position. Well, we'll see. Obviously trying to avoid the the jaws of the yellow pocket. At least it's come out and give him some kind of look. Yeah, with that, though, I know he would have probably lost the frame if he'd missed the pink, but if he potted the pink, he definitely won. John against 51. As the red was going across the yes. table there, I thought if the red traps in the jaws and leaves it over the pocket, Robertson's in to win. So Higgins will be relieved at least. The red ran safe. Yeah, I'll be surprised if he doesn't find himself in trouble, though. Red behind the black, white down the table. Inevitable. Now, can Higgins get this safe? Thank you, John. It's hard to see the red not kissing the black when he comes off the black cushion to hit the red. Oh, that's a disaster because that's a free ball as well. Foul. And a mess. Three ball for the Robinson. Now, is this a situation, Peter, where he might consider asking Higgins to play from where the wide came to rest? I know that the, the free ball is there. He's playing this knowing full well he's going to get the snooker anyway, should he miss? Yeah, I think that's why he's taking it. He knows it's guaranteed. If he pots it, he's got a chance to win. But if he doesn't, he's no worse off. Actually fancied him to pot that. I'm a little surprised he missed it. As a free shot. In fact, he didn't even get the snooker. So that was not a good shot by Neil. I figure that whoever pots this red is probably going to win the frame.
captain he played that one well and cleverly lots of topspin to hold the cue ball down there right in behind the black yeah superb control john now just got to trust the luck try and make a nice contact on the red nice thick contact if you can send the red round the table Don't miss the red. Yeah, now is it going to go safe? It doesn't look like it. From here, Robertson should get his first frame on the board. One. And although he didn't want to land there, at least he's got choices. Yeah, big shot though, the green. Yeah, definitely going to be on the yellow. Definitely going to be on the yellow. He I didn't realise he had to make the cannon, but he's Four. played that very well. That was an excellent shot. And should be a frame winner. Six. Yeah, John. I'm sure he'll be thinking maybe he should have gone for the pink now. He's lost the frame anyway. So with the Nine. disappearance of the green, Robertson is 14 ahead. Higgins knows the Australian still needs brown and blue. Thirteen. A little too close for comfort. Judging the potting angle here with cue ball and object ball so close together, that's quite demanding. Not a certainty this, Peter. No, certainly not as easy as it should have been. I think the pace he's going to have to play as well. It will probably finish over the pocket if he doesn't pie it. You called it, he did it. So blue, pink and black for John Higgins to force a respotted black. As you can see from the replay, that was so close to dropping. Five. Yes, we could be going for a a respot. Eleven. Yeah, get the coin out, referee. John 69 Higgins, points 18. each. An extra black is required to determine who will win the third frame between Robertson and Higgins. Now, we've determined, Peter, with regard to use of cues, your old school. What about with these respotted blacks? What do you do? Like call John. Yeah, I think you have Tails to go called, side to Tails side these days. It's, it's just okay. the easiest one to judge. You're just trying to get the cue ball fractionally higher up than the 
than the black and leave them on opposite side cushions. A little bit of drag to keep the white ball on line going down the table. Yeah, something like that, that's pretty good. Uh, John, don't know if he dare risk taking the white all the way down the table and having a go at the double. Yeah, it's risky. Always looking for value, though, Higgins. He knows that Robertson's potting from distance hasn't been as sharp as normal. Yeah, he's got down a little bit quickly for this. Seven. Peter, what I'm do we know? That was seven. straight in. No fuss, no mess. His best pot of the day. Neil Robertson. Thanks to a respotted black, wins the third frame. John Higgins, though, still leading 2 1. We join table two just as the match is coming to a conclusion. In fact, that is the last shot, unless he flukes the red, Judd Trump. He's played very nicely in this match. He was 1-0 down to Karen Wilson. Since then, though, breaks of 108-83. In this one, he's dominated without making a break of any great substance. 32. But he spotted some really good balls. Now, bear in mind, Trump started off with a 3-1 win Six, over Zhao Guodong after losing the first frame. And it's exactly the same score progression here. Two wins out of two as we see some Trump exhibition stuff. 40. For now, the three-time Championship League winner finds himself at the top of the table. The draw was made today for the WSD Classic, a world ranking event coming up right here in Leicester, actually, later this month. Don't know whether these two are aware of the draw, but Neil Robertson, he's paired with Luke Simmons in the first round. John Higgins actually given quite a, a tough assignment, I thought. He plays Michael White. Yeah, Michael's been playing some pretty good stuff since he got back on the tour this season. A tough game for Higgins. And both players need a, a good run if they want to get in the Tour Championships. Well, you say that, Peter. Oh, if John Higgins wins the WSD Classic, it won't be enough. John Higgins. That's how far down he is. All right. <laughs> Fair enough. Robertson could still do it at the last gasp, but not John. Bit further. Yeah, that kind of around here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, John. Thank you.
needed a super fine contact and he didn't get it. Yeah, just talking about that one-year points list, the Tour Championship, the top eight players on that one-year list qualify. Robertson at the moment is 20th. One. John Higgins, I'm going to surprise you, Peter, 47th on the one-year list. Wow. They say the rankings don't lie. They have there. <laughs> yeah. That's a whopper. Or maybe not. Johnny Gens won. Yeah, and this is this has been part of the problem for John of late. He's getting himself into winning positions and I don't know if it's I don't know if it's tension, if it's concentration, if it's just confidence. He's just starting to inexplicably miss. One. Maybe it's just even Father Time catches up with everyone in the end. He plays so well still for the most part. But what a gift Seven. for Neil Robertson. By the way, Peter, I've just noticed WST Classic draw. Peter Lyons against Mark Allen, number one in the one year list. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, he might not even bother coming once he finds out he's playing me again. <laughs> yeah, is his, hey. is his um, tour championship card guaranteed? Because he's under pressure. Oh, it was. <laughs> it was about six months ago, I think. <laughs> yeah, you can't even cling on to that no. glimmer of hope. <sighs> six months is an exaggeration, but three months, certainly, he yeah. was... Always in after he won the UK Championship. Shortly after Joaquin. winning the Northern Ireland Open. Oh, come on, Phil. Throw so me he... some sort of lifeline. <laughs> well, he won the World Grand Prix as well, so maybe he's tired. Ah, there you yeah, see. thank you, thank you. Big shot coming up. 21. Because Robertson can't trickle this. Nicely 22. done. Yeah, very confidently played. Got to be careful going into the reds when he finally decides to. Doesn't want the pink spot to open up and then get covered up. Yeah, that's OK, though. That's come out 28. nice. I can tell you the second match of the evening session on table two is underway. Corin Wilson remains out there to take on Stuart Bingham. Given the way things have shaken up so far, a really important match for both. 29. As Robertson starts to look like his old self. Yeah, this looks a little bit awkward, but he's okay because he can just drop this in. There's a couple of reds waiting. 
across the table and pink on the black spot so it should be no problem yeah I think we're going 34. all the way Phil all the way with LBJ 35 that was in the 60s in American politics that was the slogan for Lyndon Baines Johnson when he was running for president. Oh dear me, I've drawn Mark Allen, that's a slogan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 41. Yeah. I'm not sure what I'm running for. The hills, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, nothing to do with the cue ball here for Neil. Still three reds in the open. Pink off the spot. We'll put in 43 points in front. Stopped in his tracks a little bit. Surely he hasn't snookered himself on the red, just to the left of the pink. No, he's okay. A bit worried for 49. a second, but it's almost certain to be game over now. This looks like being the third match of the day to go to a full five frames. I think we'll see plenty of contests in this group. Go to the wire. 55. Yeah, so evenly matched, these players. Yeah, I'd be interested to hear whether John thinks he should have taken the pink in the last frame 62. and played for the last red. Put his all his eggs in one basket or not, or if he would have still played the same shot regardless of the outcome. Yeah, logically, he had the black been a certainty I could 67. understand the fact that he wanted to play that for more difficult position but it was difficult anyway 68. we don't know what went through his mind what we do know is that he's going into a decider Robertson now in pursuit of a century Seventy four, seventy five. Yeah, and all this came from the routine black that John Higgins missed. Three players at the top of the century list for the season. Eighty one. All very closely tied up with each other. Eighty two. No one has got a definitive lead. Those three players are Mark Allen, Neil Robertson, Judd Trump. Eighty eight. Eighty nine. All three of them are in the forties when it comes to the centuries they've made. Ninety one. Eighty 
93. And Trump and Robertson are in a race to see who will become only the third player to make 900 or more centuries after, in ascending order, John Higgins and, of course, Ronnie O'Sullivan. 96. One hundred. You yeah, just had an ominous feel to it. As soon as John missed that black. One hundred and eleven. One hundred and eighteen and frame. Neil Robertson, Robertson back on level terms with a plum. A break of one hundred and eighteen. It was two nil to John Higgins. Now it's two two. The last couple of frames have been a tale of two black balls. This a respotted black for Neil Robertson to win the third frame in dramatic Take fashion. In. Decided frame. And then Neil Robertson in the break. fourth frame, Neil was the beneficiary when John Higgins missed a very routine black off its spot, went nicely in. So 2-2, two, two, everything riding on this. Decent break off. John got to be very careful. He doesn't trickle a red over the corner pocket if he plays off the pack. It looks like one is one is going to go very close to it. Yeah, luckily he could just avoid the pack. Shot to nothing, but probably erring on the side of safety anyway. Take the opportunity to open these reds right up, try and force John into a mistake. A little bit more conservative than I thought, but. Still, he's played it pretty well.
Yeah. Excellent length on the safety. When you listen to old cricket commentaries, Peter, your fellow Yorkshireman, Fred Trump, Fred Trump, Fred Truman, was always talking about the importance of good line in length when it came to fast bowling, and exactly the same applies to safety. Yeah, and I was just about to say, it looks like it's proved dividends, but Neil are very fortunate there that the red has come back away from the pocket and landed on the red closest to the left corner pocket. So it looks like it's just a safety again for Higgins. Higgins in a little bit of trouble here. He's got to be careful. He doesn't want to kiss one red onto the red on the black cushion and knock it over the pocket. So got to tread very carefully here. His second decider of the day, John Higgins, would love a similar outcome to the first when he beat Stuart Bingham. 3-2, making a break of 108 in the fifth frame. KG opening. And can Neil swing it round the angle and get it somewhere near the yellow? Oh, definitely not, is the answer. Although, again, I think he's been a little bit fortunate there. Because although the pot seems fairly straightforward, where's the position going to come from? Yes, it was one of those rare double kisses, wasn't it, that actually helped him? Yeah, the second kiss just bumping it back out towards the middle pocket. Now, I don't see how Higgins can really get out of there and get onto a colour. And if he goes for the red, he's got to be very careful. It doesn't take the eye off the pot. been some excellent safety shots being played so far in this decider.
Cool. Two for the price of one. He would have much preferred one red and position. The first red, played for, went in like a rocket. The second one into the same pocket, almost at pocket weight. But nothing doing in terms of the colour. Yeah, and if anything, he's in a bit of bother now. Two reds fairly close to the corner pockets. He's got to be very careful here. Got to get that white tight under the rail at the bulk end. John against two. Which he hasn't done. And because he's left it slightly off straight, Neil should be able to just pop this and run off the bulk cushion and back out. John Higgins there. Now has he left a shot to nothing, the red below the pink? Can he ever go at clipping this in? One. Nicely done from Higgins with a modicum of safety attached. Knowing full well a couple of ball colours were waiting there to help. Control that nicely. Just slip past that red. Leave it into the middle pocket. Still a couple of shots away from making this a decent chance. Five. goes. Ten. Just pull it back a little bit, get the black back on the spot and this could really open things up. Yeah, just want it to go a fraction further. Should be okay though. Len. Again, just overrun a fraction.
just can't 16. quite get that cue ball under complete control. Still should get this red in the middle, but always a little bit tricky. Seventeen. Now then, should be okay now. Again, 22. Just come too far for one and not far enough for the other. Looks dead straight on the outside one, which is no good to him. Got to be careful when he pulls his back, he doesn't go in off in the middle pocket. Taking the more difficult one of the three. against 22 and there you go just couldn't get that cue ball under control still expected him to get that but walked away from the table with a disgusted expression on his face What a pot. What? Deserved a better kiss than that. Although Robertson can put Higgins in maximum strife here. Yeah, if you can block off the side cushion as well. Force him to go at least Maybe two cushions. One. Contact made. Whoopee. Ball left on, though. Yeah, it depends what the angle's like as to whether Neil can get through and just run through for the black. The hesitation tells us all we need to know. He doesn't believe he can hold this. So had to come off the cushion. One. All in all, nicely played, but nothing simple from here. That is a Robertson special. Yeah, trademark long pot. Six. Needs a good queuing again here to screw this back. And didn't get it. Yeah, just missed hit it again. Six. Well, we saw because of the excellent camera angle right down the line of the shot, he queued right across that. One of the worst shots you'll ever see Robertson play. Yeah, massive reprieve for Higgins. One. Now can he capitalise this time?
Six. <coughs> yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Chung got the rest out and played the one closest to the cushion. You can yes. just knock it in, come off the cushion an inch or two for the black in the opposite centre and give himself a chance to win the frame in one visit. A much tougher shot, but I think he should get it, so... I'd be surprised if he misses it. But he has missed it, I'm afraid. John Higgins, six. It's amazing, Phil, isn't it? it cleared Fine. up in the first frame. He looked tremendous, went two and up and missed that chance to win the match and now he's struggling to get over the line again. It's not a very nice habit to get into. Far from a straightforward layout for Robertson. Eight. But that doesn't disguise from the fact Higgins will be annoyed. The red we've just seen stayed out. Nine. Yeah, still plenty of snooker left in this weather. Last four reds are, though, now. But Higgins, he had a 20-odd point lead there going into that. He wouldn't have needed nowhere near as many balls. That's a nice shot, though, nicely controlled. 16. I can tell you after the shot. Eventful finish 17. to frame one, match two of the session on table two. Karen Wilson potted the yellow at speed, tried to come round off three cushions for the green. He only succeeded in seeing the cue ball fly into a top corner pocket, and Stuart Bingham cleared the colours to snatch the frame on the black. into this match. Neither of them will want to lose it now. Especially 24. John Higgins knowing he's got to stay on and play again. This is the psychology of the the sport. 25. Yeah, that had a good look before it dropped and I don't think he's come far enough so he can just roll through for the red, has he? Trying to just hold, but that is not a good shot. I don't fancy this 32. one along the cushion. And can't afford to just drop it in because he doesn't want to leave it so it stays over the pocket so Higgins can move the other red in putting this red. So this needs a good shot. Oh, that was tremendous, effortless. Sweet as a nut. 30. I'd say it's all about the last red fill, but the chances that they're both missed, who knows?
Will he be tempted by the double? 40. He's having a look at it. Just a safety, but played it very well. 40. You get the impression that's what his opponent would have done in exactly the same situation. Yeah, just, again, just want to make some full contact, try and get a bit of distance between the two balls. And don't go in off. Ooh. Now then, one good shot from Neil. And should be game over. Surprised he didn't have a go at that. Although he's played it very well. That little nick on the brown on the way past just slowed it up enough to be a snooker. See this. Uncomfortable shot, one of those you don't get very often. You're not faced with very often. Used it. Okay, thank you. Now, can Higgins see it? Can he see enough to get a safety shot in? No, I'm going to swerve it. What a battle this has been. I didn't know what to expect beforehand. What I didn't expect was a match. Best of five, bear in mind. That's taken nearly two hours. No, me neither. I thought this would be quick fire. One visit stuff. Kiss for Neil. This time off the green. Yeah, John's last three, four, five shots have all been just trying to get himself out of trouble and not leave the red on. That was so well cued, especially for Robertson being now 18 points ahead. So Brown makes that 22. Yellow and green will see him through. 
through to victory. And I think John Higgins will be kicking himself. This one has definitely just somehow got away from him. Five. He's had enough chances to have won it. And you can trace it back to when he was clearing Seven. up in the third and he refused the pink to middle. Yeah, I think that was his chance to win it. Never really got a chance after that in that frame. Ten. So contrasting fortunes for John Higgins. Earlier today, he came back from 2-0 down to beat Stuart Bingham 3-2. This time, 14. he's going to lose 3-2 against Neil Robertson after leading 2-0. Neil Robertson has two wins out of three. Only one win out of three for John Higgins.